Okay, let's continue looking at the David Bronstein versus Mikhail Botvinnik match of 1951. Um, this, the segment of the match, game six to ten, is a bit of a sad part of the match, really stemming from game six. And if there's any lesson, it's not really to do with chess, it's about, well, how people can take things out of context. Because he blundered in game six, it was, it was unfortunate, but it was still early on in the match. Tons and tons to play for, there was no need for any, like, negative press about it, or people, uh, you know, overly, you know, dramatising the blunder. Uh, which had happened in this game, and unfortunately, you know, it did it did get uh, too much profile perhaps this game because of of the seemingly you know outrageous blunder. It attracted harsh criticism, which unfortunately affected the rest of the match. So the real brilliance of of Bronstein maybe was kind of um, obscured by the events, or uh, you know, of of this game in particular. Um, I mean, this was one of the most unfortunate. Uh, early events of the match which had the biggest impact therefore on the remaining games so whilst we saw brilliance in game one to five you know great resourcefulness from both sides um, yeah this this is a bit of a sadness here okay so let's see how the game unfolded I'm recording just just the game board now on the score sheet just to try and get a bigger uh, view by the way on YouTube I hope this works out well so David was playing white e4 Okay, so we have Sicilian defense, and we go into the Richter Rosa variation with Bishop G5. But after E6, not um, F4 and Queen F3, but now Queen D2. Well, the knight's actually pressurizing D4 anyway, so that that variation is not particularly playable here anyway. It's it's when Black plays A6 uh, that that's more more viable with pressure on D4 White plays now D, queen d2 so also you know he has to protect that knight anyway so h6 prompting you know uh, a reaction from white what to do with the bishop doesn't really want to retreat it I think uh, so taking it is is best probably um, now if black takes with the queen and d6 is a bit vulnerable so he takes with the g-pawn and it gives uh, Mikhail a bit of dynamism of course on g file himself as well as the bishop pair um, so it's a difficult nut to crack, I think, Black's position in practice. And we see here now, uh, so Bishop d7, Black's trying to generate counterplay on the Queen's side and maintains a kind of solid fortress here. Look at these pawns, this L here of pawns. It's it, With the two bishops, it's very solid. So anyway, taking on d4, and now Queen a5. No need to castle anywhere. No need to, to present white any exploitable weaknesses here it's a difficult nut to crack basically which has been presented so h5 now stretching out as well on the king side a bit restraining g4 rook f3 uh, so still david was in good spirits at this time i, I imagine yeah so this this game um from white is, is okay so far but black has a solid position so queen a5 and now casting queen side the fun's been taken out a bit, hasn't it, really? With with no easy attack on the king. Black has the two bishops. The double pawns are nothing really to write home about here. So this isn't a fantastic advert for smashing up the Sicilian so far. Um, I, thi I think... Uh, well, in, in vain things, but it's been mentioned that uh, Bishop F3 was perhaps over prophylaxis against D5, which was just an imaginary threat. It wasn't a real threat. And actually, Black could have been discouraged from casting Queenside into safety by playing a uh, move like A3, because castles then B4. Then if Queen A3, then Knight D5, protecting B4, and the Rook's Knight attacking the Queen. And then you know B6 would be dangerous. So Bishop F3 might have been the cause of slight... Um, discomfort now. If Black's able to castle Queenside, King's safety issues out of the picture a lot more now. So the fun factor has gone down a bit. And for a creative person like David, I think, um, uh, yeah, you know, he he needs to work a little bit harder now to try and get an advantage, if it is possible to get an advantage. But there, there is some dynamism which which comes up now. So Black's rerouting though that horrible dark square bishop, which White doesn't possess a dark square bishop. And a5 and now uh, stretching on the queen side as well. So bishop b6. This bishop's kind of impressive now on that diagonal. 
So really, Black's using the trump cards at the opening, and and for for weaknesses which are not really exploitable at the moment, it seems. So the semi-open C file as well. This is, looks unfortunate. This looks painful to play Queen C4. Um, but I guess uh, you know the the C file pressure is, is mounting, and you know possibly if a knight retreat. Uh, there's a lot of active options for black, uh, which might include, I mean, I imagine d5s, or maybe even b5s, a bishop a7 b5. A knight retreat looks pathetic to b1, but this looks structurally like a, re uh, you know, a wreck, queen c4. Just, just superficially, it looks like a bit of a wreck. But he's got an idea that now, actually, these weaknesses might be exposed by h5, start picking off some of the white pawns. Okay, but it's protected at the moment. And he's still got a bind on d5. That's another point, having these double pawns. The c4 pawn helps bind against d5. And also the d6 is a potential target. So potentially doubling now is doubling on d6. Evicting the bishop. And now targeting that h5, that knight maneuver, really pointing at h5. But, but, yeah, black's got enough pressure on g2, so it couldn't be taken there. Now the knight's rerouting to d5, but now exciting exchange sack. Instead of let these uh, two bishops uh, wreak havoc, this after bishop d4, rook takes d4. So a critical moment. Uh, so has white got enough for the exchange? Well, h5 is is going to be weaker now. So if you know knight can reroute and win that pawn, then that pawn will drop. You can imagine the knight taking on h5, then it will be taking f6 later. So actually, Botvinnik is very keen to give up the exchange here rather than wait for knight f4 takes h5. Gives back the exchange. Uh, so we have same color bishop scenario. But still, you know, white saddled with these double pawns here. And it, I don't know. It's not so easy. He He's potentially winning h5 now. He wins h5 but loses h4. Wins f6. So a lot of damage has been done. But his pawn stretch is not the best. So really, um, black still has a lot of chances to draw now. So rook d4, in fact, black with the active king now, and a4 and c4 being very weak. Look at this chain, it's it's just diced, really. That, um, But still, white's not losing. He shouldn't have lost this game. And th this is the real tragedy, actually. Uh, one part of the tragedy of this game is, is evidenced uh, very shortly now, after e6. Uh, really, um, you'll notice that this bishop is not the same color on, on this square, dark square, light square bishop. So really, if if white can get rid of the pawns, it's going to be a draw. You know, like in a recent blitz game, managed to draw. You get rid of the opponent's pawns. There's more drawing chances, especially here. You can get rid of these two pawns. Leave leave black a bishop up. It will be a draw. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, after f takes e6, um, I mean, may maybe it's not it's not totally easy to consider this. Uh, but um, you know, f f is a, a, you know, a simple way to draw. Okay, and and this this also um, is 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 drawing, uh, but it, maybe it needs a little bit, tiny little bit more accurate play. But still, it's still drawing. Black's e pawn shouldn't have been a major threat here. Look at it on e six. It's not a major threat, but f e might be a bit simpler. So bishop e eight, king b three. So the idea is to keep a hold of the c4 pawn for a little bit longer. But, you know, black's e pawn is still counterbalancing that. c3 check. So knight h6. The knight's steering the pawn to win, win a piece. But uh, unfortunately, this, this pawn's a really fast runner here, uh, which, which secures black a draw, believe it or not. So white's winning a piece. It's academic here. His knight... Is not fast coming back now, but he's played knight d8 with the idea of knight e6 and d4. And now here, unfortunately, look, we've got move 57 and one of the biggest tragedies in chess, really, because I think it affected the rest of the match. I, you know, it's painful. It's painful, and also the criticism uh, received, you know, but by other people. I mean, it reminds me. I had this match on on Chess Cube last night, and actually, I I ignored 
spectators. I knew it might affect me, so I ignored one. Uh, there was one spectator in particular. Now imagine, okay, it's not the same scenario. This is not a game which was played online in 1951, but we've got some of the same implications that this next move was heavily criticised by loads of people, maybe the media. Obviously, it was a high-profile match. And it was only early in the match, really. You know, it doesn't matter. There was still lots of time to win lots and lots of games, to play lots and lots of creative chess. And I don't think David himself was, was that hard on himself. Um, apparently, he'd sunk in thought about the opening phase of the game and, and maybe the innovation which might have occurred, which I think maybe have been H6. The early H6, possibly. I don't know. But he had sunk into four for a long time, apparently. And then played this horrendous howler of a move. Um, which loses. He plays, instead of knight e6 check, well, the knight can come to d4, munch the pawn, and get these two pawns. Black would get these two pawns, though, as white gets the b7 Black will get the c4 pawn, but he plays this move, king c2. It's, it's unfortunate. Now, of course, e2, king d2. Um, but um, Botvinnik's next move, um, you know, uses the king to steer the pawn, but remember, there's a knight on the board, right? So the obvious way to get to f2 is king f3, yeah? But uh, king f3 allows knight e6, you see. Then if e2, there's knight d4 check with a fork. So actually, Botvinnik can still get to f2 in two moves, though. Uh, so, yeah, he plays king g3, as this score sheet shows, which I'm showing you on the right all the time anyway. So it gets to f2 without allowing the check. It's tragic. But with the king coming to f2, this pawn's unstoppable. This pawn, which could have been munched earlier, is now unstoppable. It's a horrific blunder which occurred. And David wasn't allowed to forget it, you know, and, and put it in context. That's the key thing. Maybe that's a human lesson that if you're in a tournament, early rounds, you have a horrendous loss. Say it's a nine round tournament, you have a horrendous loss. Say you get horribly swindled in round three really got to put it behind you all the battles are ahead same at the start of the season who cares you've got all the battles ahead got to put it behind you put all your resources into the remaining games so maybe it's a big human lesson for all of us this this blunder and its consequences this was in game six okay um so let's let's just quickly just just verify though here that you know, knight e6 is a new variation. Check. So say king e4. Here, king d3. c5. Takes. So something like this, um, where. You know, the knight's tied down to the pawn. But now, you know, the king can arrest the white king uh, from like getting b7. So it's a draw. Okay, let's move on to game seven. So this is the tragic segment of the match. Okay, game seven. Okay. So bronze theme playing black. Let's flip the board. David playing black. Plays d5, e6. Plays Dutch. He's, he's not playing this as a Slav. To the Catalan of white, which is now very popular. We've got Avril books now on this. And Mikhail Botvinnik was playing it in 1951. It's like, talk about rehashing old ideas. This is all played in 1951, this stuff, which has now come to be trendy again as a way of keeping the tension of the position, avoiding, uh, you know, mainline E4 theory. Playing this stuff instead, Catalan. But, um, David, you know, he generates, uh, he doesn't mind so much about the dark square bishop issues of the Dutch stone wall, which I guess is slightly intriguing. He believes maybe in the dynamism. Um, and there is a little tragedy in this game, which also doesn't help the rest of the match, I'm afraid to say. 
I, I, I'm, I don't want to pl- paint too bleak a picture, but it just it just seems to be a strange coincidence that I did highlight games one to five, and it's games six to ten, which can be labelled as a total disaster. Um, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, I mean it's a controversial system, isn't it? If you're weakening the dark squares like this in the Dutch stone wall, and this is the classic recipe. Uh, for exploiting the dark squares, the old b3 and the bishop a3, which I've mentioned in one of my my previous over the board games, I played this as white. I had a lost position, but managed to draw because because of some combination backfiring. But b6, at least the light square bishop is is trying to be solved, doing something, but it's very passive for black, it seems, um, on the c file. I think objectively, I checked briefly this game with engine and. Um, like this move e3 is quite good actually it's preparing prof- prophylaxis against c5 here cd basically this bishop needs to be locked down uh, so d4 needs to be reinforced as a blockade just in case to keep this bishop locked down on b7 and white just to use the c file operations uh, to in- intensify pressure on the c file so c5 but now actually you know this is this is slightly controversial Okay, CD doesn't mind actually exchanging off his bishop on g2 for the b7 one. He wants to basically play on the c file and on, on the dark square e5 as well. The dark squares are a bit vulnerable. So white's got a very comfortable position. Maybe this is not the sort of position you want against Mikhail Botvinnik. But strangely, uh, you know, here coming up, there's... You know, white's slightly better, yeah. It's it's really uncomfortable for e5. So the classic recipe for exploiting the dark squares has been used. And this strange add to the mixture of exchanging g2 for b7. Uh, just to keep uh, things very simple and, and great clarity uh, from Mikhail Bobnik, we could say. There's great clarity. But there's a very strange blunder which is about to occur. So this strange queen invasion and then coming back. Now a4, maybe psychologically a bit of torture, you know, saying I'm, I'm restraining your pawns a little bit more, a little bit more restraint. So knight e8, just waiting a little bit. There's a famous game actually, uh, David just uh, swings a knight to and fro against someone in in a worse position against Petrosian, and Petrosian actually then blunders his queen as well. So sometimes if you want to wait, you can wait with knight moves actually. They don't change the pawn structure but um, knight e4 now something committal cd a5 so fixing white's pawns now ha prophylaxis against white's pawns against b4 now knight f6 again but now there's a little bit of a tactical purpose yeah this next move okay white white's again a little bit better but you know black should be able to draw this this move f4 probably is not great, but Botvinnik's reaction is terrible. He didn't need to take this pawn. In I checked some of Vane's thing's analysis with 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 Lubka. It's not right for White even to take the pawn, even after exchanging rooks here. White apparently it get gets a solid a sort of small advantage, solid by playing g4 after the exchange of rooks. The exchange of rook should have happened now and then g4 basically. Forget about taking the pawn. In, instead of taking the rooks though, g takes f4. What a terrible blunder. And black should have been fine now. Um, but he didn't calculate much. He, he, he played this next move without calculating that much. Um, Now, actually, I, I I I must confess for the for the details here. So, knight h5 is a blunder. First, black needs to take on c2. Now, let's see why is knight h5, which seemingly a natural move, threatening to fork king and queen, a blunder here, and not in a different variation. Well, the game continuation shows why it's a blunder here. Rook takes c7. Rook takes c7. All the rooks off. Queen g4, protecting f4, threatening to come into e6, d5 is weak, other things are vulnerable. 
Well, not threatening Queen E6 immediately. There's Knight F4 check. Um, but here, there's there's a threat uh, of Queen D7 check, exchanging off the Queens, and then B6 will be weak. So Knight Knight F6 parries that, but then Queen E6. Okay, and then things are unpleasant for Black. So in the game, this opportunity though here missed is important that rook takes c2 rook takes c2 and now knight h5 threatening knight f4 so rook takes c8 knight f4 winning the queen and if queen g4 of course there's rook takes c2 so here if white um, has to defend then it's going to be a draw, you know, take and then take on f4. Uh, there's also another variation why this, this somehow something was rejected here, something very strange in this position. Um, something to do with king f3. Pardon me, there, there was another idea which was rejected. Um, It maybe it's of no consequence really. Uh, there, there are there are a few variations, but the key thing is uh, that rook takes c c two. I think uh, to keep the queen tied down uh, to try you know, force force white's response to this issue here, this f four pawn. Okay, so the game was was tragic. <laughs> Again, another mini tragedy really. That after this terrible move, objectively, g takes f four. Um, that this happened, that Botvinnik was comfortably able to get a torturous endgame, and of course, move forty is a, a special significance in this match, going into um, a German. So basically, in games interrupted for analysis, as, as David would probably um, highlight um, in the Sorcerer's Apprentice, but I haven't yet got. But I, I have, I'm going to order the Sorcerer's Apprentice. But I'm looking at Vainsting's book. So Vainsting was a very good friend, by the way, of of David. And apparently uh, contributed also to Zurich 1953. I think he was a KGB guy. But um, apparently Mikhail's um, connection was much higher up in the Kremlin. Um, okay. So, sorry, an aside. <laughs> so, so what happened here was a disaster. Black's going into an inferior endgame now. This horrible threat now of Queen D7. This Queen G4 is just too powerful. Not just defending the pawn. Fender, you know, this this torture ending now. So Queen D7, B6 is dropping. So after losing F4, it doesn't matter. The King's also slightly. It's well placed. D5 is a big problem. Lots of torture opportunities now are pawn up. So how does Mikhail convert? Takes quite a few moves actually. Move 41 to 66 here. Let's see this conversion. Gets the knight to E5. Probably this is plan A, plan B, plan C stuff uh, for Botvinnik. Uh, he's probably outlined all the plans. He's worked out all the plans in his, in his German analysis. With his great team supporting him. So B4 creating a pass pawn was probably plan uh, 3.1. <laughs> now we're probably coming up to plan four, uh, playing F4 now. <laughs> so the knight, the, the knight's tied down to, to stop the queening, but now um, there's a potential H pawn once White starts mopping up here. If King F5, the knight takes D5 anyway, distracting the knight, then probably winning F4, winning H4, two pass pawns, too much for black to bear. Hopeless, totally hopeless position. Oh dear. This, this spells tragedy, these two games. Game six and seven. So the artist which had reached the highest points in his career to play for the World Championship match was heavily criticised. Uh, so in his own words, he was daydreaming in, day, in game six. In this game, I don't know, a, li a lack of calculation at a key moment, just for the extra precision needed. The idea was was fundamentally okay to play f4 if the horrendous gf4 is, is considered, which it didn't actually technically needed to be. 
the Dutch Stonewall choice yeah is controversial on the dark squares uh, it would have been nicer to have got a nicer position in this game segment there is a nice game with black which we're about to say C which was actually amazingly messed up and amazingly Botvinnik didn't win an entire rook up we're talking about more than plus four this is in game nine of this game segment five to ten but uh, let's let's go to game seven first so game seven sorry this this was game seven let's go to game eight now so game eight unfortunately also uh, whilst David was was creating controversy I mean with the dark squares and the Dutch Stonewall which is potentially losing you know strategic chump card Mikhail was content to have Rock's solidity of his heavily analyzed Slav defense so if he could easily draw with white and get a slight advantage sorry easily draw with black and get a slight advantage with white then he's a good match player isn't he basically and this is horrible this is just without f5 it's a lot more solid basically isn't it black's controlling the dark squares there's a little bit of uh ideas now about this bishop liberating it so these implications now of, of getting out the bishop which were echoed in Amand Kramnik matches you know very recently in recent couple of years so we kind of got this line this sharpness bit of dynamism for black but black sorting out the light square bishop problem basically off of after all the fireworks here black's got no big major obvious problem piece once he sur survives this uh, seemingly you know fireworks okay and we could also say look look there's a there's a two to zero pawn majority here but you know black's got the center pawns um, not going to do a martial cap blanket black's actually use the central pawns to offset white's two to zero pawn majority so watch the central pawn start to to move the knight unblocking the f pawn f pawn starts to move the center starts to move it's got some tempo gaining targets namely the king okay so a pair of rooks come off it's difficult not to crack here these pawns are also blockadable uh, potentially as well like so a7 is a blockade point so black can try and put the pressure on now again with his central pawn mass so it starts to bring on with a pawn sack now it starts to actually trade the b pawn see that pawn sack traded the b pawn for the g pawn with this g5 so if it's only one pass pawn now it's not going to have a connected friend next to it it's less significant so David's got the uh, the two bishops they don't really mean much black's center pawns are quite powerful now now it's lost anyway with this um, knight c3 check gives up the dark square bishop doesn't want to lose any more space here so g3 trying to fix these pawns it's a draw now basically and it was agreed to draw don't want to talk about this game too much it just shows that what does it show <sighs> I hate to say this but it shows that obviously Mikhail has played this a little bit more playing a little bit more solidly as black with his Slav defense so in that respect he's, he's you know he's a solid hard nut to crack you know he's like a pistachio nut he's got an outer shell you've got to take away the shell first try and exploit some weaknesses but he was provoked in a game coming up um, with white now he thought he was having a clever innovation but he maybe overstepped the mark with his pawns a little bit in this next game so yeah this this just shows, shows look the light square bishop problem is solved striking out the white center with this c door allowing this like this 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 continuation looks a bit crazy hair raising but it's okay you know white white kings actually disrupted as well it's it's hair raising stuff um, so that was I don't know uh, let's not say too much about it let's move on to the next game so game nine okay ah oh, <laughs> this makes a mockery of the match this really does in what world championship matches has someone been a rook up and not one there's not can't be too many of such games an entire rook up um, David had a brilliant position and totally blew it 
Okay, so we're going to see why. So this amazing novelty idea. So bishop e7. Nothing too mysterious or deep, deeply magical about black's play, but I've fallen for this myself actually. To play d5 here looks, oh, gaining space. Oh, you know, knight f3, d4, you know, lots of pressure here. No. Black's fine here. He plays seemingly tempo losing move. Bishop b4. But it's nice for black. White can't really play d e, you know, d e. There's nothing there. Um, so Mikhail plays this poxy looking move, bishop d2, and black's totally fine now. He just plays e5. It's been a total disaster for white. Look at the dark square provocation. It's like when I play the tango. My, I've got a 90% win rate with the tango on, on, on chess cube. When white plays d5, I'm, I'm secretly celebrating. I'm thinking, this is going to be another dark square disaster. Because look at all these dark squares. Look at this diagonal. This bishop can reroute maybe to the diagonal. You get that in, in like the tangos that have been playing. That's why you know in the tango, you know they try and stop the fun now. They play an early knight f3. They make sure black never gets in an e5 like this. Once you play d5, beautiful dark square control. What's more is that d5 is even slightly vulnerable. So a6, good plan, very good plan. Undermine d5. Um, because the, there's also dynamism still on the f file to, to, to be achieved here. With the bishop not on g7, shut down, it's, it's on this, it's, it's nice, it's, it's an attacking scheme here with this queen e8, maybe queen h5 or queen f7s. Very dangerous with this bishop on this diagonal, you know, to play f4, ripping it open. You've got the makings of a brilliant hack attack. Now we see this move f3, trying to tame the situation. But now energetic move from David. Actually, let's, let's flip the board. Sorry, let's flip the board. An energetic move, Benko Gambit style, plays b5, undermining d5, of course. Mikhail plays queen b3. Shouldn't have worked out as well as it did. No need to give up the bishop yet. So bishop c5, keep on the dark, on the dark square dial. It's even more weakened by f3. White's opening has been a total disaster. But after this c takes b, and it's easy of course to say in retrospect now, a b is good or knight d7 is good. Just taking the pawn, knight b5, queen s7, hitting on d5. Then there's also c6 as a threat, because then queen takes b3 is actually threatening to win the queen because you've got the pressure on the a file. So this can this idea I'll just, just show you. So this is an interesting engine bit of analysis. Queen f7 equalizes. White can't simply defend d5 because c6. The knight's trapped here anyway. So if the other knight was used, then c6. There's no d takes because of queen takes b3 here. Look at this dynamism. a file, d pawn. b3 is not a great place for the white queen. But no, it turned into another disaster, the third disaster of this segment of the match. Unfortunately, instead of taking the pawn, no, he doesn't take the pawn. It achieves a few strategic objectives. It weakens d5. It creates the a-file pressure, but he miscalculated somehow. I think, unfortunately, these inaccuracies, I don't know, they creep in from a more psychological blow dealt with him. From game six, people moaning about his, you know, blunder, celebrating his blunder, winding him up. I think... Maybe, you know, one problem with artists is consistency, you know, versus machines. You know, Botvinnik made himself into this machine-like person. You know, l you know, tons of theoretical preparation in the Slav. A rock-solid, like, pistachio nut to crack, you know, with a terrible shell. You know, one of the shells, like, sealed in that, you know, you need to... You can't even use your fingers to uncrack the... It's, 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 as, it's as solid as that, basically. Sorry. I'm going to town on that. But basically, you know, when facing Mikhail with black, this was a fantastic opportunity. He played terribly with white here. Terribly. And it wasn't captured. You know, basically, here, knight takes... Uh, so instead of c takes... He plays bishop d7, falling for a... Stu a, a silly... I hate to say s stupid or s silly. I don't know. 
But th there's something diabolical now about the position um, that Black's not getting any of, of, of the pressure, the dynamism, because now B, uh, B6 is coming in. After knight a4, so this move bishop d7 was terrible. Because now knight a4 and now b6. And although white seems to be losing a piece, it's a diabolical trap, isn't it? Loses the piece with the queen attacked. Don't need to move the queen. Mikhail plays b7. And he's an entire rook up now. I kid you not, he's just won an entire rook. Now, Weinstein's writing about this to say, you know, he get, he, he basically said he pretended as though he wasn't a rook down. That's, like, that's what I sometimes say in my, my blitz games. Just, look, okay, you, you've lost a rook. You, you make a note, okay, I'm, I'm a rook down. It's either resign or play on as if nothing has happened. Those are your two choices, guys. <laughs> uh, actually, outrageously, <laughs> David, in a world championship game, chose the second choice. Is actually a rook down, believe it or not, here. He's a rook down after pawn takes rook queen. Just to emphasize, look, there's two white rooks and there's only one black rook. Three minor pieces each after A takes because this bishop was attacked. Now look, three minor pieces each. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just sanity check again. One black rook, two white rooks. How on earth did Mikhail mess this up? To be fair, his queen's a bit stranded. Now when you when you win material, especially if you're a human being, not an engine, sometimes it's difficult to re-centralize because the magic is in the center. This queen's not quite in the center. It's right on a corner of the board. Got to get back somehow. And to get it back, Mikhail uh, blows a plus four advantage very, very rapidly here. Instead of bishop f1, apparently that's the best move. Just give up these pawns to try and trap the white queen. That's what an engine would do. Bishop f1. Give up the two pawns to try and establish centralization and get the queen out. But no. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Knight c3. Okay. Without the bishop on f1, White now gives up one of his rooks. He plays an exchange sack. So we've gone now, we're going down this evaluation hill of plus four to about plus three now after this exchange sack loss. And it gets worse, losing the center as well, that center pawn. And losing another pawn. So, okay, white's still a piece up. But now, look, the center pawns have been wiped out. Black's got a formidable, like, center. And he's got an active A file. Look, look at these guys, spectators. It's total embarrassment, this game, for the history books of Mikhail Botman in a World Championship game. Probably one of his worst ever games. He regrets this game completely, the way he played. He was very self-critical in his notes, obviously. Being a rook up you know, is, is, is quite a big deal uh, to only draw the game. So white's a piece up now. It's not as clear cut as before because of all these pawns, basically, and all this pressure that David's got. So he's crawling his pawn forwards, his pawns forward. Crawling, crawling, crawling with his pawns. Three past pawns in the centre here. It's a wonder he didn't win. Okay, so Mikhail got you know, the G6 pawn, but also we've got to the the safety checkpoint, haven't we? We've moved 40, all the German business. So White offers a draw, which, um, I don't know, um, I guess David can't play for a win here. I, I should have checked this. Um, he's a piece down, so he probably trusted uh, Mikhail's draw offer. If you guys want to analyse this position, you know, the PGN, um, get the PGN, that'll be cool. Does Black actually have any winning chances here? He's got this armada of pawns. If it was a blitz game, I'd play on. But if you're playing against Mikhail Botvinnik and his team, which like goes high up in government, and he's got a massive team of a German and this. I, I don't know. I'm exaggerating, maybe. I don't know. But he offered a draw and it was accepted. This was a move 41 after the game was interrupted for analysis. I, I think White's... Um, 
I guess White's drawing now because he's got he's got the two passed pawns to sack a piece back and, and try and use his passed pawns. But after being a rook up, it's it's incredible, really. I'm sure you agree. Um, so let's go back. So and um, was that game ten? That was game nine. So game ten. So David playing white. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, maybe he felt himself a bit lucky. Maybe he perked up a bit after that. <laughs> you know, if he's going to be criticised for game six, well, there's game nine. He was a rook down, and he managed to get a draw. So, um, I'm I'm hoping he he felt perked up by the fact he wasn't destroyed in this match, and it ended up being a level score. I guess it might have perked him up. <laughs> that humorous game uh, nine. So, okay. By the way, sorry. Here, I've been going through the moves without comment. I don't think this is good for White at all. D4, E6 reserves the possibility of F5, which will create, help create a bind on E4. So really, uh, in the Nimza engine, Black often wants to spend time doing that anyway to play F5 later. So here, I'm not really sure about this Knight C3 move. I played this against the WGM in the British Championship, Susan Lally, and I managed to draw after Knight C3, Bishop B4, but I felt conned. Because Black's got a bind for nothing on 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 e4. This is strong binds. It's it's sort of justifying more the bishop b4 pin. And I don't know if David's evaluation of this at the time was just a bit more optimistic than it should have been. I I think preferable is in my opinion to play knight f3. Let Black play for a Dutch stone. We'll have the dark square weaknesses. Play for Bishop a3 later. Weaken the dark squares. Get a big knight to e5. Play on the c5 knight. Imitate Mikhail Botvinnik against against the stone wall. Not this. This doesn't seem right to to allow Black to have f5 free of charge here with the knight not blocking it. Okay. So e3. It looks. I think Black's fine. Unfortunately here. So c5 striking at the center. And although, okay, white's got a potential little trump card here, this diagonal, it's not very easily realizable, especially if you're giving black a big knight for a knight on e5 now with dc, losing control of that center, the magic of the center here. Huge knight on e5. And also this bishop is, is not really a problem piece at all if it's on this diagonal, preventing white's uh, you know attacking plans with g4. So this knight e5, it's a monster the knight here for the moment, and it's a real nuisance now. This this setup for black, there's a lot of control of the centre. Iron grip on e4. You don't want this against Botvin. It's iron grip on e4. It's not good. I don't think it's as good. White can't easily castle queenside. This poxy f3, which both players seem to be fond of in this match, poxy looking. But yeah, I mean, it serves a purpose to neutralize e4. So knight h5, black's the one playing energetically now. These these moves are just too passive. Queen c3, yeah, but it's no big deal. The knight's like stopping the mating one. <laughs> okay, and, and also white's still got issues on the king side. g3, yet another pawn move. e5, and now f4 looks as though it's logical, but there are indeed um, complications, but really black um, at a point coming up very soon now, instead of this mysterious queen e7, which, which David was confused by, f4 is crying out to be played, and it wasn't played. Uh, so there was, there was some complications um, Mikhail was talking about, which he didn't like. But with the white king in the center, when I was checking with engine, engine finds like bishop sack in the center, and the f pawn's nasty. But, uh, okay, Mikhail plays an intuitive human move. He doesn't want the complications of f4. Plays actually queen e7. Black's still torturing white. White's got nothing out of the opening. This diagonal's blocked in. Psychologically, some damage has been done here. You know, what's the big deal of white's bishop on b2 here? Okay, so black is comfortable. White's crawling his king to safety. But look at this bind on the dark squares. There's nothing to write home about here. And that f4 again piercing into the dark squares. But positioning now. 
try and get you know d4 e5 especially e5 so now look these pieces are on e5 nice blockade square actually more torture now instead of e5 not e6 the d4 even more significant for the center so black's doing absolutely fine unfortunately for david he can't win this position he's got the two bishops that they're not they're not that good black's got great control uh with his knights actually e even though the doctor square bishop's got some potential targets here that they're solvable here in this particular position uh because this knight and the king are pretty good there's no entry point for the white king obviously uh so a draw was agreed here so that was game five to ten if i painted the bleak picture well <sighs> Sorry, six to ten, six and seven, disasters. Nine, whew, there was a remarkable human decision to play on a rook down against Mikhail Botvinnik, and to draw that is just a total, unbelievable event. Anyway, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.